Well, it's a slow week for MMA, but a pretty big week for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They had the World Masters Tournament, which is the World Championships for everyone, 30-plus. So they have a bunch of divisions there um, broken out, just depending on how old you are. So the Masters is 30-plus, um, but they're also like Master 1, Master 2, Master 3, Master 4. So then you have like a group for 35, 40, 45, and so on. So a lot of interesting um, a lot of interesting matches there. It's pretty cool to see some of the older people who are still in Jiu-Jitsu, still competing to, to go out and compete for a really big prize and... Obviously, every division that there was one, someone actually got that prize and actually got the gold. I uh, had a lot of teammates that were out there competing, so that was pretty cool as well. But with that being said, there was also a pretty big adult tournament, not just the Las Vegas Open, which is a pretty nice tournament, but the IBJJF Heavyweight Grand Prix, which serves as a, a little bit of a palate cleanser, a little bit of an appetizer for Jiu-Jitsu fans before ADCC comes next month. So in the first round of this tournament, we had Joao Gabriel Rojosha versus Patrick Gaudio. He won that match by decision. Uh, we had Vinicius Tractor for Hera, who was a late replacement. He beat Luis Panza in a bit of an upset, uh, one advantage to zero. Lucas Barbosa beat Tim Spriggs 12 to nothing, although that fight was more of a 2 nothing match. Effectively, what that match came down to was it, it was going to be a battle who was going to get the first takedown. Barbosa got it. Spriggs was down with a couple minutes left, 2 nothing, and he tried to open up to find a way to score and come back. And while opening up, that's when Barbosa just went after him and was able to pass his guard a handful of times. Um, and then the other first round match was Roberto Abreu, uh, Cyborg, who defeated Victor Hugo four nothing in four nothing in advantages as zero zero and four nothing. Hugo also a late replacement for Yuri Samoyes. So then moving on to the semifinals, we had Joel Gabriel Hosha versus Vinicius Tractor Ferreira. Uh, Hosha won that match five nothing. And then we also had Cyborg Abreu versus Lucas Barbosa. Barbosa is a guy who I I would have picked to win this tournament. I, I didn't do a preview video just because people kept dropping out. So it was one of those things where it's like I put out a video a week ahead and then two of the guys that were supposed to be in the St. Man tournament aren't in it anymore. And the preview kind of becomes kind of pointless. But um, once the final bracket was announced and once everything was set to go today, um, Barbosa was the guy I thought was going to win. Had a great start against, or against Cyborg Abreu. Got two takedowns, was up 4 Um This was... This match ended up being a battle of two takedowns apiece. The difference is, is that when Lucas Barboza came, went in on his went in on his takedowns, he was able to finish his takedowns in the middle of the mat, so he would just get two points straight. When Cyborg would go for his takedowns, Barboza would try to, in his efforts to escape, and I, I wouldn't say that he was just like gen, genuinely trying to escape. I, I think he was trying to play the game too. He would go out of bounds, so the ref would not only award two points for Cyborg for the takedown, but they would also penalize Barboza for fleeing the mat. So even though it was two takedowns apiece, in a way it kind of worked out funny where the guy who was able to finish the finish the takedowns clean um, ends up losing to the guy who wasn't able to finish them clean just because the guy who wasn't able to finish them clean wasn't able to do so because the other guy was trying to run out of bounds. Uh, so for that reason, two takedowns apiece. Barbosa gets two penalties. Cyborg gets zero penalties. Therefore, Cyborg wins. Then we get to the finals. Um, this was Joao Gabriel Hosha versus Roberto Cyborg Abreu. This fight. It was mostly a wrestling match for the most part, and it was one of the things where it looked like it, it was just going to go to a ref's decision to whoever was more aggressive, and it looked like Cyborg was more aggressive. So with that being said, it looked like Hocho decided to take a bit of a chance later later on and see if he could do something to to win the fight in the eyes of the judges, and here was the attempt that he made. So it kind of goes for a guillotine from front headlock, loses it immediately. And then from there, Cyborg attempts to pass. Now, Cyborg never got an advantage for his pass attempts there. But with that being said, this attempt to at least like show a submission attempt and possibly steal the fight with less than a minute left here, we have 52 seconds. It, it didn't work out for Joao, and as a result, Cyborg, who was a little bit more aggressive with his takedown attempts on the feet, um, and then also appeared to at least be trying to pass here, ends up doing enough to get the nod. He wins the tournament. He wins $40,000. Uh, Joao Gabriel Hosho ends up winning $10,000 for getting to second place. Um, if you aren't familiar with these guys, both of these guys are world-class guys. Cyborg has won world titles before. Joao, I think, has finished second a handful of times, but he he's right there, and he's he's capable of beating the guys who do win it all. He just hasn't done it on the biggest stage yet. Except for him, I guess, another, another big event where he's second place, but he, he's right there. He, he's definitely capable of getting it done and being first place. And I wouldn't be surprised if he does win a big tournament sometime in the next year or two. So a little bit of tough luck for him. Uh, a little bit unfortunate. This tournament ended up having zero submissions in seven matches. Uh, every match ended up being on points. If you look at the scores here, 
not exactly the highest scoring event either. So we had the decision 0-0 with an advantage, 12-0, which was basically a 2-0 match. Most of the excitement came late. Um, 0-0, 5-0, 4-4, and then 0-0 here in the finals. So for the IBJJF, it's nice that they did an event like an event like this. It's good for the winners to actually make the money that they made. But hopefully the next time they do something like this, we, we get some more submissions, a little bit more excitement. But either way, I, I feel like this is a, a solid palate cleanser, as I mentioned before. I'm really excited for ADCC coming up, and this has got me even more excited now than I otherwise would. So can't wait for that to happen. Uh, once that event comes around, I will do a preview video, and then obviously I'll do some recap videos as well for it. 